problem is that a lot of companies confuse compliance with security. So Ilya, despite banks investing more and more money into cybersecurity, cybercrime is still growing. So why is this? It's a very good question, but I don't think it's, a, it's related to the amount of money we are currently investing into different cybersecurity solutions, products or services. It's about uh, appropriate risk management. For example, today a lot of companies are just uh, thinking that we need to do something and they are talking to numerous cybersecurity companies that exist and they just, you know, are receiving a lot of uh, inquiries from various vendors who are saying that only our technology can save you and the world. And finally, they purchase some technologies that are not really relevant for them. I've been always saying that <clears throat> information security shall be both efficient and effective. What I mean by this? If a product, let's say, for example, a firewall is efficient, uh, it can be compared to other similar offerings, to other different firewalls available uh, right now, and the price ratio shall be higher or at least the same. In this case, we can say that the product is efficient. And today, actually, there is a lot of uh, efficient services, products uh, and uh, companies. However, <coughs> effectiveness is much more important and currently it's a disaster. I will explain. Effectiveness is when you need these particular products uh, or services to mitigate appropriate risks in your company. And what is uh, uh, missing today is that a lot of companies omit or do very quickly without taking a lot of various you know, factors into consideration when doing internal risk assessment. Because cybersecurity shall start with internal risk assessment. This means that we need to identify all possible risks. Then we need to prioritize them, saying that the first top 10 risks are this, this and this. Afterwards, we need to identify which security controls like uh, different services, products can mitigate them. And only after we shall start uh, purchasing something. What's typically going on now is that companies spend a lot on efficient products that mitigate risk number 27 and 55. First top 10 are remained uncovered. Obviously, the companies get hacked after they mitigate risk number 35, uh, 22. And uh, finally, they got hacked again. And this is destroying the confidence to cybersecurity in general. So I would say it's not how much do you invest and how much do you spend into different cybersecurity services and products. It's uh, if you spend on the right products that mitigate the right business risks appropriate to you. Absolutely. So following on from that, can cybersecurity standards and regulations such as PCI and DSS, can they actually stop cybercrime? I would not say that um, different security standards like PCI DSS or uh, federal laws like HIPAA, FISMA and others uh, can really stop um, cybercrime and practically speaking they are not designed to stop cybercrime. It's rather, you know, to prevent it and to minimize uh, the consequences of uh, cybercrime, let's say, to a, an acceptable level. For example, speaking about PCI DSS, it's not um, a standard that aims to completely stop uh, uh, fraud with credit cards. It just, you know, to assure that all uh, companies who handle, store, or process credit card data, they respect, you know, strict minimum of cyber security and this preventing uh, theft of the cards. But you know, in <coughs> today a problem is that a lot of companies confuse compliance with security. I would say that if your company has uh, properly done risk management, properly implemented security controls in appropriate order to mitigate this risk, passing any compliance will be pretty quickly and simple for you. Absolutely, and you mentioned credit cards there. So what can banks do to actually tackle cyber crimes? I would probably say that uh, coming back uh, again, uh, cybersecurity shall start with appropriate risk assessment when the banks need to clearly identify all the risks. 
I would probably suggest to involve as many people uh, external and internal to assess them because you know uh, every company is very unique even if we're talking about banking industry or even more particularly about private banking forex so on every company every banking institution is unique and has uh, its own risks with different uh, impact probability so um, everyone shall start with appropriate risk assessment identifying the risks uh, giving them appropriate priority to make sure that we're not uh, going to remediate a risk number 99 before a risk number one two and three then once they have a clear understanding of their risks they need to uh, invest into different security controls. It can be uh, human control, it can be cybersecurity product solutions, whatever, to prevent or minimize uh, the, the consequences of those risks and uh, obviously perform continuous observation of the risks because uh, unfortunately new threats are appearing almost every day and it's important to see uh, which uh, threats uh, are appearing and this causing new risks for your business. So with the new threats coming every day, shall banks continue to invest into cybersecurity? I think they definitely should. However, it's a question that, again, they shall clearly understand that every cent, I'm not uh, even speaking about every dollar, but every cent shall be invested with a clear understanding of which uh, uh, security risk uh, it's mitigating and uh, with a clear understanding that, you know, uh, more priority risk have been already mitigated or currently being mitigated like this. Uh, we can assure that uh, spending on cybersecurity, what's uh, currently is uh, the case, will become investing into cybersecurity. And many venture companies today are investing into cybersecurity startups. Is there a lot of these companies on the market and is there a risk that there's a bubble that we're seeing at the moment that could actually burst? Well, I would say that probably it's too early today to speak about the bubble. The biggest problem that is today is that uh, venture uh, companies shall hire professionals who used to work in the industry like hiring ex scissors from the banks to make proper technical evaluation if this particular technology can be really useful and can it solve a, re a real problem that businesses want to solve because uh, right now a lot of companies they try to create a problem promote a problem and then sell a solution so something not really <laughs> helpful I'd say. Well thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your insights with us. Thank you for your invitation. Well, that's all for myself and Ilya, but for all the latest Dugascopy updates and exclusive interviews, do keep clicking back to Dugascopy TV. Goodbye for now.